Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Goodable Show, a newscast where we only cover good news. And here's what we got coming up. This week, a hero risked his life to save hundreds of people from an explosion. We're going to show you the incredible video of how he did it. In Goodable History, a young girl changed the course of American history simply by going to school. And here in Canada, a neighborhood coming together to make sure that a special young boy wouldn't miss out on Halloween. All of those stories and so much more coming up. Are you ready for it? The Goodable Show starts now. All right, before we begin, you know the deal. Hit that subscribe button on your screen and help us bring more goodness to the world. Our top story this week, in the UK, you may have heard that a suspected suicide bomber blew himself up outside of a hospital. Now, I know, I know, that's really heavy news for a newscast like this, but here's the thing. Everyone else has been focusing on the attack. We want to introduce you to the hero who stopped it. This is David Perry. He's a taxi driver who happened to pick up the suspected suicide bomber. And here's the incredible footage. You can see the car pulling up outside the Liverpool Children's Hospital. David realized that the suspect was carrying explosives. So he locked his car from the inside so that the suspect couldn't get out. Now that also meant that David himself was trapped inside. Moments later, the car explodes and bursts into flames. Now look closer. You can see one person escaping. That person is David. He managed to escape with just minor injuries, and his quick thinking potentially saved hundreds of lives. A GoFundMe account that's been set up in David's name has already more than doubled its original target. More proof that goodness spreads. All right, moving from one hero to the next. This next story is about the bravest and smoothest little boy that you'll meet. This is six-year-old Waylon. A couple of weeks ago, he had heart transplant surgery. He decided to walk into his surgery dancing to his favorite song. In fact, the entire department couldn't help but get into it. And the best part is, he made it through surgery with flying colors. Next, we want to take you to the town of Hope in British Columbia, where the community there has been coming together in incredible ways to help strangers. If you've been following the news, you know that British Columbia has experienced one of the worst storms that Canada has ever seen. It caused power outages and road closures and left people stranded with no resources. But through all of that, the tiny community came together to help those in need. These are the owners of Hope Pizza Palace. They've been using their restaurant to serve tea and pizza to hundreds of people who were stranded in their cars. These are the volunteers of the Duk Nivaran Sahib Gurdwara. Together, they've made and served over 3,000 meals and counting for those stranded in their town. They're even paying private planes to fly these meals out to people who are too far. And this is the Vancouver Chiefs under 18 team. They were traveling on the road when the storm hit and were geared up to pull over and sleep on their bus. When one of the players' uncles found out, he opened the doors of his home to the entire team. Next, we want to talk to you about a teenager who made headlines across America and changed the country this week forever. No, it's not that story that everybody else is talking about. This teenager did something incredible. This is Abraham Olagbegi. He was born with a rare blood disorder, and this year, he received a life-saving bone marrow transplant. That qualified him for a wish through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Instead of asking for something for himself, he wanted to help others, so he asked if he could feed the homeless for an entire year. This is what he and his family told CBS News. When the homeless people get the plate, some of them will come back and like sing to us and thank us. And it just really feels good. It warms our heart. The, it just really feels good. And my parents always taught us that it's a blessing to be a blessing. So. Now, once a month in Jackson, Mississippi, he heads out with a group of volunteers and together they feed 80 people who are homeless. And when the year is over, Abraham says he already has plans to turn the initiative into a charity. He says he's planning to call it Abraham's Table. Meanwhile, in news that's literally out of this world, 
NASA has announced that Jessica Watkins is going to be the first black woman ever to be part of the crew of the International Space Station. Watkins started as an intern at NASA, but she's also studied at Stanford, has a PhD, was an aquanaut, and even played international rugby. Oh, and that sound that you hear? That's the sound of a glass ceiling shattering in outer space. In track and field, a world record was set this week when a woman ran the 100-meter dash in just over a minute. Now, that really wouldn't be making headlines, except in this case, the woman was 105 years old. All right, here we go, here we go! This is Julia Hawkins taking off from the starting line. In front of a cheering crowd, she sprinted as fast as she could, setting a new world record for her age category crossing the finish line and offering this reaction. I'm so happy. <sighs> Meanwhile, down under in Australia, the country's annual crab migration is underway, and it's actually one of the most spectacular animal migrations anywhere on the planet. It's kind of like this, or this, or maybe even that, except it's all crabs. An estimated 50 million bright red land crabs are making their way to the Australian coast. Now, crossing roads is a major challenge for them, so the team at Parks Australia put up this crab bridge to help them cross safely. They even put up tiny fences to help them get onto the bridge and make it across. And in case you're wondering why the crabs would go through all of this trouble, well, they're actually on their way to the Australian coast where it happens to be mating season. Okay, get your buzzers ready. We're going to introduce this next story in a format that you might be familiar with. The answer is, this beloved actor helped millions of children to read before he was turned down as the new host of Jeopardy. This week, he announced he was getting a new game show of his own. Who is me, LeVar Burton? The former Star Trek star and Reading Rainbow host announced that he'll be the new host of a Trivial Pursuit game show produced by Entertainment One. The show's release date hasn't been announced, and it comes after more than 300,000 people signed a petition calling for LeVar Burton to become the permanent host of Jeopardy. With American Thanksgiving right around the corner, it looks like Elmo... Hi, everybody! Oh, um, hey, man is about to have a brand new friend to play with on Sesame Street. Give it up for G.R. <laughs> Aw, thanks for the intro, everyone. That's right, Sesame Street is introducing a new Korean-American character named Ji Young. Somebody come and play today. It's part of its See Us Coming Together special. Love making new friends. Ji Young is seven years old, and she already knows how to shred her guitar. The show is set to air on Thanksgiving to celebrate the diversity of Asian and Pacific Islander communities as part of the show's ongoing racial justice initiative. And somewhere out there, you just know that Kermit is smiling. Meanwhile, here in Canada, look, I know that Halloween is over, but that didn't stop a community from coming together and rallying to help a special young boy. Meet four-year-old Wyatt. He just loves Halloween. This year, Wyatt couldn't go out for Halloween because he was in the hospital. When his neighbors found out, they came together and decided to keep their decorations up for an extra week. And they even all dressed up so that Wyatt could go out a week later dressed in his Spider-Man costume to celebrate his favorite day. Oh, and um, while we're at it this week, the new Spider-Man trailer dropped. So Tom Holland, if you're out there and you want to do something amazing for one of your biggest fans, you know what to do, slide into our DMs. Just at Goodable. This week, America witnessed an important anniversary. 61 years ago, a young girl dared to stand up for her right to go to school, and in doing so, she changed America forever. Here's Mercedes with this week's Moment in Goodable History. Hey everyone, it's Mercedes, and welcome to This Week in Goodable History. Today, I want to tell you the story of Ruby Bridges. 
Ruby grew up in the 1960s as a young girl in Louisiana. It was a time of systemic racism, protests, and Black Americans demanding the equal rights that they had been denied. When she was just six years old, Ruby was escorted by four federal marshals on her first day of elementary school. When she got there, hundreds of people were already outside, holding signs and demanding she go back home. Ruby didn't. On that day, November 14, 1960, Ruby became the first African American to integrate into a Southern elementary school, after the school had previously only allowed white students to attend. Ruby insisted that she deserved the same rights as any other student, black or white. By the next day, the crowd had doubled, and inside, some of the teachers refused to allow her in their class. But one teacher, Barbara Henry, stood up for Ruby and offered to teach not only her, but any other student who wanted to be in her class. They went on to form a friendship that has lasted for decades. Ruby could never have known how important it was that she walked through those doors and the mantle of change that she carried with her. Through her perseverance, Ruby became the face of change and the fight against racial segregation. Today, she still speaks about injustice in schools, and she has her own foundation to promote respect and equal treatment to all races and differences. It's a message the world can still use today. And that's why Ruby Bridges is your Goodable moment in history. In Goodable Sports, it's one of the best pregame rituals of all time. The haka is a traditional Maori dance typically performed in New Zealand to honor great achievements. And New Zealand's teams do it pretty much before every big match, whether it's on the court or on the field. This week, New Zealand went to Ireland for a rugby match, and the team was treated to a very special haka. This is the Together Academy. They're a group of young men and women who have Down syndrome. They're also huge rugby fans, and to welcome the New Zealand All Blacks, they studied, memorized, and performed this special haka just for them. We're not sure which one's better, the reaction from New Zealand's players or the fact that Ireland went on to win that game. It's a scene that you see in hockey rinks all across North America. A player goes up to the boards and tosses a puck over the glass to a fan. Well, this time it happened in reverse, and it's a story that will melt your heart. The Winnipeg Jets recently hosted their annual Canadian Armed Forces Night. NHL hockey player Philip Deneau skated towards a fan dressed in full military uniform and tossed him a hockey puck. It was a way to say thank you, but the veteran exchanged the puck for a military patch. After tossing the patch over the glass, Deneau placed the patch on his heart and posed for pictures. While we're on the subject of hockey, Kristen Welsh recently made history as the first woman to ever officiate a game for the Ontario Hockey League. She joins the ranks of women breaking barriers in hockey, including Katie Guy, who became the first woman to officiate an American Hockey League game earlier this year. A reminder to young girls everywhere that glass ceilings are meant to be broken. Hey, what's up everyone? Mercedes here to chat with this week's Goodable Hero. This is Norman Greenstein. He's a 65-year-old veteran and social worker. 13 years ago, Norman was diagnosed with Parkinson's, a nervous degenerative disorder that affects movement. In high school, he loved to draw, but was told that he'd never make it as an artist, so he didn't pursue it as a career. But after his diagnosis, knowing that soon he might not be able to paint, he decided to pursue the dream he left behind all those years ago. Now, even with Parkinson's, he paints to raise awareness about the disease and raise money for research. Today, we're chatting with Norman about his journey and about how art has changed his life. Thank you so much, Norman, for chatting with us today. We are so excited to hear about your story from your own words. How has your life changed since you got back into painting? Uh, I used to walk by galleries and look in the window and think to myself, gee, that's a nice painting. I could do something similar to that, but I didn't try. And once I tried, some of the times I did do paintings that were worthy of my th earlier thought. I've been doing a lot of painting, and my theory is that I may not be able to paint forever, 
So I paint as much as I can while I can. I produce a lot of artwork. The walls in my house are all full of, I had better start selling some pieces because I don't have room to store them anymore. 10% goes to Michael J. Fox Foundation and 10% to American Parkinson's Disease Association. That's wonderful. That's so great that you're able to use your passion to, to help out others that are just experiencing the, the same life as you. And finally, what is your message to those out there who are too afraid to follow their dreams? Don't give up. Follow the dream. Do it. Norman, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's really inspiring to hear your story and I wish you the best of luck with your art career moving forward. Oh, thank you. That just about wraps it up for this week's show, but we got a couple of things we got to take care of. Number one, we want to hear your best news of the week. Tell us in the comments and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. When you do, it helps us bring more goodness to the world. Before we go, we want to leave you with footage of an incredible 73-year-old grandpa who is still skateboarding like it's the summer of 1969. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Stay safe and stay goodable.